Hello. My name is Allison. Dr. Robert Allison. I guess a better way to introduce myself is to say I'm Jeep Allison's father. You know, there's nothing very terrifying to a doctor about a case of measles, but I remember a case that almost ended up with me behind bars. And all because of one young gentleman who has too much imagination for my own good. I refer, as if you didn't know, to my ten-year-old offspring, my son, Jeep. Yes, it's my son, Jeep. Another in the series of warm-hearted and hilarious adventures of the Allison family of Grove Falls. And starring Donald Cook as Doc with young Martin Houston as wonderful, unpredictable 10-year-old Jeep Allison. Like uh, so many other major crises in the Allison household, this particular one began one quiet afternoon. Uh, Miss Miller was in my outer office, and I was in the next room with a patient, when suddenly the quiet was rudely shattered. As a matter of fact, you might say it was exterminated as Jeep made his usual unobtrusive entrance into the house. Hi, everybody. I'm home. Hi, Miss Bixby. Oh, Jeep, Allison, just once I wish you'd shut that front door without rocking the whole house. Then you better get a new doorknob. What's wrong with the one we got? It keeps slipping out of my hand. Oh. <laughs> you and your excuses... Well, if you want something to eat, there's some nice apples in the pantry. Well, I'm not hungry. I think I'll go talk to Miss Miller. Oh, now, Jeep, your father's probably got patients waiting to see him. Miss Miller's busy. Don't bother her now. Oh, who's gonna bother her? I just want to say hello. All right, Mrs. Perry. We'll change it to 3 o'clock on Tuesday, then. Yes. Yes, I'll tell the doctor. Goodbye. Oh. Hi, Jeep. Hello. Your father's got a patient in with him now. Oh, I didn't come to see Pop. I came to see you. Oh. <laughs> well, anything special, dear? I just came in to visit. Gosh, when you were my substitute teacher, I used to see you all the time. Oh. But now that you're working for Pop, well... Jeep, what have you got on your face? Huh? Well, it looks like a rash or something. Oh, I guess it's just dirt. Now, who's next? Oh, uh, hi, Jeep. You want to see me? No. He's just paying me a little visit. Oh. Say, uh, what's that on your face? Nothing. Well, I noticed it too, Doctor. It looks like a rash. Is your throat sore, Jeep? Not really. Well, open up wide and let me see. Ah! <laughs> what is it, Doctor? Mm-hmm. Now, uh, let's feel your forehead, son. You can close your mouth now. <laughs> What's wrong? Oh, nothing much. Just a common, ordinary, garden-variety case of measles. Oh, my goodness. Hey! What is it? You mean I don't have to go to school tomorrow? <laughs> I wouldn't let you go even if you got down on your hands and knees and begged me. Oh, I wouldn't beg you, Pop. No, I didn't... <laughs> I didn't think you would. Well, sir, you're the doctor. What you say goes. Uh, you overwhelm me. Now, go on upstairs to bed, and I'll be up right away. Golly, Pop. I feel swell. Why do I have to go to bed? I am the doctor, remember? Yeah, but I don't... Oh, golly. Oh, I know you feel all right now, Jeep, but if you don't go to bed, you'll feel awful later on. Well, what's so terrible about going to bed for a few days, being waited on hand and foot? I wish I could do it. You can take my place. <laughs> <laughs> There's your chance, doctor. Now, you stop undermining my authority. <laughs> Miss Miller gives you a bad time, too, huh, Pop? Uh, not as bad as some people I could mention. And don't think changing the subject does any good. Now, come on, off to bed. Don't rush me. I'm going. Will you come up to visit me, Miss Miller? Oh, I'd love to, honey, but I can't. I've never had the measles, and I might catch them from you. Oh, golly. Well, stop acting like being banished to Outer Mongolia. Now, the sooner you go to bed, the sooner you'll be Where's able... Where's Outer Mongolia? Scat. Really, I want to know. Go on, Doctor. Tell him. It's just north of inner procrastination. Now beat it. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, Mrs. Bixby, uh, do you know where... Hey, Jeep, I thought I sent you to bed. Well, I'm going, Pop. But I got some things to take care of first. 
Like what? Like trying to keep from going to bed. Oh, I gotta call the fellas. Tom won't be around no more. Can't just disappear and leave your friends wondering. Jeep, you're stalling. I am not. Gosh, Pop, you couldn't come to your office tomorrow when you have to let a lot of people know? Well, all right, all right. Uh, go on and make your phone calls on the upstairs phone and then jump right into bed. Well, that even washing first? Okay, okay, I'm going. <laughs> that boy. He, he sure don't act sick, doesn't he? Well, not right now, but wait a couple of days. The house will be awful quiet with him in bed. I wouldn't bet on that. Uh, what did I come in here to ask you? Oh, yes, I remember. Uh, where's Peggy? She went over to Mary Patricia Pearson's. Oh, uh, do you think she knows the Pearsons well enough to stay with them for a few days? Oh, sure, Mary Patricia's her best friend. But why? Well, I don't want her to catch Jeep's measles. Oh, that's right. She's never had them. And I don't want her to get them now. Mm. I can just hear her if her face broke out in spots. Father, how could you let this happen to me? I'll be marked for life. <laughs> <laughs> I'd better call the Pearsons right now. Uh, you can't. Why not? Jeep's on the phone. Now, why is it that whenever I want to use the phone, somebody else is using it? Uh, tell me, Miss Bixby, where would you say a poor widower like me fit into the scheme of things around here? Well, if you really want to know, Doctor, there's Jeep, Peggy, then me, and now Miss Miller. Oh, I'm last, huh? Well, you asked me. Yeah. Well, okay, I'll wait until Jeep gets off the phone. <laughs> Skeeter, you tell the fellas that while I'm in bed, you're in charge. Huh? Well, I don't care what Boots Douglas says. If he doesn't like it, he can just join another club. No, I feel okay, but I figured it'd be smarter to stay home. After all, measles is pretty contentious. You mean contagious? Oh, hi, Pop. So listen, Skeeter, too many of the guys are behind in their dues. Huh? Oh, Boots is always complaining. Two cents a week is not too much. Anyway, I gotta call Tommy, so I'll talk to you tomorrow. So long. Would it be all right if I used the phone now? Not for a while, Pop. You gotta call Tommy and Hank and... Now listen, you realize you've been on that phone 45 minutes already? Well, who do you want to talk to? Well, by this time, I don't care. I'll even talk to Tommy or Hank. <laughs> I have to call your sister. Well, what for? To tell her to stay at the Pearsons until you get over the measles. Oh, golly. You mean I don't even get to see Peggy? Never seemed to make that much difference to you before. I know, but I'm sick now. Uh, which reminds me, why aren't you in bed? You said it could make my phone calls. Uh, uh Jeep, old boy, uh, whenever we get into one of these discussions, I always seem to come out second best. So just this once, please, assume that I know what I'm talking about. Okay, you're the doctor. Well, I was beginning to doubt that. <laughs> now, here, I want to take your temperature. You think I got a fever? Hmm? I said, do you think I got a fever? Well, if you don't keep the thermometer in your mouth, I'll never find out. <laughs> Did you eat all your breakfast, Jeep? Sure. I was hungry. Well, that's wonderful, dear. That's a good sign. You'll be up and about before you know it. I said that yesterday. Gee, Miss Bixby, I'm getting tired of getting cooped up in this old, old room all day long. And with nothing to do. Why, Jeep, you've got a whole closet full of games. Besides, it's only been two days. Three. The first day don't count. We spent most of it getting you into bed. Now, I better take this tray downstairs and start getting your father's breakfast ready. I'll be up later to read to you. And tell Pop to be sure and come up before he sees me and before he goes out on his calls. Now, what'll I do? Hey, I know. I could call all the fellas. You bring the phone in here and put it on the table. Oh, but I have to get out of bed. Anyway, the cord's not long enough. I know. I'll call the phone company and tell them to come over here and put a new one in. But I'd still have to get out of bed. Well, no use arguing. I just have to get out of bed. Hey, Gee! Oh, boy! Hi, Tommy! Come on upstairs! You still sick? Sure. Don't think you get over the measles just like that, do you? It's a serious disease. Maybe you better not stand so close to the house, then. I don't want to catch your own measles. 
Well, you haven't had them, huh? Oh, boy, I wish I could stay home from school. No, oh, you're lucky. Oh, yeah? You should try it for a while. This boredom is killing me. It is? Sure. Nothing to do all day. You've got lots of games. Yeah, but I'm tired of them. Well, I gotta go. I'll be late for school. Hey, wait a minute. What? I just thought of something we can play together. But I'm not supposed to. You don't have to be in the room with me. You can play this from outside. <coughs> oh, okay. Well, play that I'm held captive in this big castle, see? You're outside. You're gonna rescue me. Hey, remember the rope ladder we made last summer? I one into the radiator, throw the other end out the window. And then I'll write a note asking for help and leave it on the windowsill. Climb up the ladder, get the note, and leave me a note telling me your plans. But, gee, we'll be late for school. Well, I don't mean now. You can do it on your way home to lunch. Okay, so long. And, Tommy, sneak in some bread and water to me. Gee, you mean they're not feeding you at all? I haven't eaten for three days. Weak as a kitten. <laughs> Miss Douglas. Oh, I've got the measles. How are you? Well, listen, I called up to find out if Boots had ever had them. Oh. Well, are you sure? How do you know? Yeah, I guess you would. You're his mother. Fine bunch of friends I got. None of them have ever had the measles. Are you on that phone again? Mm, I gotta go now, Miss Douglas. Bye. Are we gonna have to tie you in bed? I was on my way when you came up. Well, come on. I can't spend all day up here. I've got patients to visit. Now, off, off with your robe. In you go. Now, look, son. You know, I don't throw my weight around very often. But sometimes, for your own good, I have to. This is one of the times. Yes, Pop. From now on, no more going to the phone. Understand? Yes, Pop. The only reason you're in bed is to give your body a chance to recuperate. To fight the measles and win out over them. Make it sound like a boxing match. Well, it is, sort of. And the bed is like a boxing ring. Well, sure. And who ever heard of a fighter getting out of the ring until the fight was over? Gee, I never thought of it that way before. Well, think about it now. I'll be back for lunch. I'll see you then. Hey, what's your rope ladder doing hanging out the window? Jeep, were you planning to climb out there? Oh, gosh, no, Pop. That's a game Tommy and Barton and I are playing. He's supposed to climb up the ladder Well, do you and... want to risk infecting your best friend? Of course not. Tommy is not to climb up that ladder. Is that clear? All right. Promise? Yes, sir. Good. Oh, by the way, I just talked to Peggy, and she hopes you're feeling better, and she sends you her love. Fine, sister, she is. She loves me so much, why doesn't she get the measles? So she can keep me company. <laughs> Are you <clears throat> hungry enough for me to start fixing lunch for your Jeep? Mm. <clears throat> oh, yeah. By the time I get through with this, I will be. My, I'm glad to see you're interested in something at last. What are you doing? Just writing. Oh, well, I'll go start your lunch. Say, how do you spell immediately? I am... What do you want to know for? <laughs> I want to write it down. Well, uh, wouldn't at once be just as good? No. Oh. I M E D I U T L Y. Gee, I was right. Thanks. <laughs> I'll go start your lunch. Wait a minute. Would you throw this out the window for me? Huh? This note is for Tommy Barton. Oh, all right. Give it here. I'm going to fold it. You got to promise not to read it. I promise. <sighs> there. I threw it out. Now, will there be anything else? Yeah. Will you call Tommy's mother? And tell her that Tommy's not supposed to climb up the rope ladder. So just have him look around it, and he'll find it. Well, shouldn't I tell her what he's supposed to look around for? He'll know what I'm talking about. Well, he'd better, because I sure don't. <laughs> Grove Falls Police Station, Sergeant Delaney speaking. Uh, oh, yes, ma'am. No, ma'am, no. Uh, uh, 
Yes, ma'am, I'll tell him. George, when the lieutenant gets back from lunch, tell him his wife called. He should pick up some store cheese and two mouse traps on his way home tonight. Hi, Sarge. Checking out for the day. Made out your report? Well, no. Wagstaff, you know as well as I do that you got to have your report made out when you come off duty. Don't get upset, Sarge. Something funny happened, and I want to know, should I put it in the report? What is it? It's this note I found. Help. I am being held prisoner for ransom. What? Rescue me immediately, or it will be too late. Let me see that. Yeah. I picked it up on my beat. Of course, I know it don't mean anything. Oh, it don't mean anything, huh? Listen, Wagstaff, do you remember that Kimball kidnapping on Lakewood? You know how the case started? With a note found in the street, just like this one. Quiet down. Quiet down now. Now, you've uh, all read the note that Patrolman Wagstaff found this morning, but there are a couple of things I want to call to your attention. Now, the paper this note's written on can be bought in any five and ten cent store. So, that ain't no clue. But uh, this is. Uh, the word immediately is spelled I-M-E-D-I-U-T-L-Y. Now, that gives us two possibilities. The guy who wrote this thing is either a kid or a grown-up trying to write like a kid. Why would he do that, Sarge? Uh, save the questions till I get through analyzing his problem. <laughs> now, we got two possibilities. Either this note is a fake or it's a real McCoy. <laughs> and, if it's a fake, we'll soon find out. If it isn't, we'll soon find out. Now, here's what you're going to do. You're going to take that section from East 9th up to East 14th and from Chestnut all the way over to Pine, see? And you're going to go through that area like a fine-tooth comb, you see? Now, anything suspicious, call me right away. Any questions? Uh, <clears throat> all right, Wagstaff, what is it? Well, Sarge, I was the one who found the note. Uh, what do you want, a medal? No, but I've done my work for today. I'm supposed to be home sleeping. Wagstaff, I'm ashamed of you. How could you fall asleep at a time like this? Somewhere in Grove Falls, there's a lonely, desperate, frightened child waiting to be rescued. You know, Mrs. Bixby, I guess I don't really mind staying in bed after all. As long as I have you to read to me. Uh, how much longer did your father say to be before you could go back to school? I don't know why. I just wonder if I can last as long as your measles. Huh? And I told the doctor the house would be quiet with you in bed. Well, isn't it? Peggy's living over at the Pearsons. Pop and Miss Miller are always busy in the office. And I'm up here in my room. Gosh, you're practically all alone in the house. Yeah, just like a vacation. All I got to do is to get up in the morning and fix your breakfast. I put it on a tray and bring it up to you. Go back downstairs and start your father's breakfast. He comes down to eat, and just when I'm coming up to get your tray. Finally, I get him out of the house, and I'm all set to clean up his office when you call me. By the time I'm ready to fix your lunch, I've been up and down them stairs 20 times. And I still haven't accomplished a thing. Gee. And that's only afternoon. You want me to go on? No, I get the idea. So don't let me hear any more about me being all alone in the house. Oh, land sakes. Now, the police car... Every time I hear one of them, I, I can't help thinking some poor soul's in trouble. Mrs. Bigsby. Mm. Mm. I'm sorry my sick makes you work so hard. Oh. Ah, uh, you jeep. Uh-huh. Now read to me. <laughs> Oh, uh, Miss Miller, yes? if you want to, you can take off early today. Oh, Doctor, I've got a million and one things to do. Well, okay, I won't insist. See, uh, try to do an employee a favor, and what do you get? Arguments. Employee? That's funny. Funny? I mean, somehow I don't think of myself that way. I feel more like one of the family. Oh? Come in. You, Dr. Allison? Hey, that's right, officer. Is there anything wrong? I'm Patrolman Wagstaff. You folks seen anything suspicious around here? Suspicious? In what way? Well, it looks like somebody's been kidnapped, lady. What? What? Yes, I found a note, see, down on the corner. 
course, we don't know where it come from. The wind could have blown it from anywhere. You mean a note from the kidnapper? No, from the kid they're holding for ransom. How awful. Yeah, so we're asking every house in the neighborhood if they've seen anything. Well, I wish we could help you, officer, but we haven't seen anything suspicious around here. Well, if you do, call the station right away. Oh, we certainly will. Do you have any clues? Just the kidnap note. Oh, wait a minute, officer. Have the police considered that this whole thing might be a practical joke? I got one answer for that, Doc. If it is, somebody's going to be in an awful lot of trouble. And the spaceship spiraled down. The roar of its jet exhaust cut off as it gracefully sank to land noiselessly on the strange and alien planet. Almost immediately, the lock in the side of the huge gray monster opened and out stepped Professor Montgomery. His eyes alight with tension and expectation. <laughs> Strapped on his back was his newest and greatest invention, the infra... The Infograd in accelerator. <laughs> oh, for goodness sakes, Jeep, you know this book line for line. Why do I have to keep reading it to you? Because I like it. Well, why don't you pick out a book you haven't read yet? Well, I might not like it. This one I know is good. Uh-huh. Somehow that don't make sense to me. But I can't quite put my finger on it. Go on, read some more. Oh, all right. Little did Professor Montgomery know as he strode across the weird red turf that from the nearby forest, a pair of hostile eyes were watching his every move. Chief, I don't see how you can sleep at night after listening to those scary stories. Oh, Doctor, he sleeps fine, but I don't. <laughs> These books give me the, the heebie-jeebies. Well, I just came up to see how everything is. A fever gone down, Mrs. Oh, Dixie? quite a bit, Doctor. Good. Mm -hmm. Am I still contagious? Well, not as much as you were, but the fight's not over yet, son. Well, you can take over now, Doctor. i got to start thinking about supper. Well, Pop, what's new? Oh, nothing much. The usual patients. Another case of measles. Where? Mrs. Roberts' little girl. Why? Uh, thought I might want to be one of my friends. Well, you sound disappointed. Sure. Or my friend. Why, he could move right in with me. Oh, fine. <laughs> Mrs. Bixby would love that. Say, Pop, did you hear all those police cars go by a while ago? Mm-hmm. Gosh, something's happening, and I don't even get to see what's going on. That's why I hate staying in bed. Well, a uh, policeman did come to the house about half an hour ago. Golly, what do you want? They seem to think there's a chance some child in the neighborhood might have been kidnapped. Gee, who? They don't know. Then why do they think somebody kidnapped somebody? They found a note asking for help. Uh, no. Nope. Yeah, they found it down on the corner. <laughs> but Tommy was supposed to. Huh? Nothing. Gee, what's the matter? You look pale. My temperature's going up again. <laughs> now, that's what comes from hopping in and out of bed this morning. When you have a fever, there's only one thing to do, and that's stay put. You're right, Pop. I should have never gotten out of bed. Well, lie back down, son, and try to get a little sleep before supper. I don't think I could now. Hey, wait a minute. You're not upset about this kidnapping. Yeah, sort of. Oh, I knew I shouldn't have told you. But now, look, old boy, you mustn't take it so hard. After all, they're not even sure there was a kidnapping. As I said to the policeman, the whole thing might be a practical joke. Oh, well, what would the police do if it was? Well, I asked the policeman that, and he said whoever did it would be in an awful lot of trouble. Anyway, try not to think about it anymore. I'll try not, but I don't think it's going to work. Well, I gotta go back down to the office. I'm expecting Mrs. Perry. You see if you can't take a little nap. Nap? I'll never sleep again. What am I do now? Gosh, she could put me in jail. Oh, wouldn't put a guy in jail with measles. <laughs> I won't have measles forever. Well, I gotta do something. Yeah, but what? I know. Uh, hello? I wanna talk to the police station, please. I have to tell them the truth. They can't do anything for a guy telling the truth. Or can they? Hello? I want to tell you something about that kidnapping. I'm the one who wrote that note, but it's all a mistake. So tell your policeman not to look for me anymore. Goodbye. I'm going home now, Doctor. See you in the morning. All right, Miss Miller. You're sure you won't stay to supper? <laughs> With Jeep upstairs in bed? 
He'd never forgive me. <laughs> no, I guess not. Good night. Good night. Oh, dear. Now there's police cars again. Sounds like they're stopping right in front of the house. For heaven's sakes, they are. What? Again? I wonder what they want this time. Well, look, there must be dozens of them. Well, I don't get it. All right, two men, what? surround the house. Uh, Wagstaff, you come with me. Surround the house? What for? Come on, open up in there. Oh, what do we do, Doctor? Well, I guess we do what they tell us to, open the door. That's the one, Sarge, yeah. the one who claims he was a doctor. Well, what do you mean, claims? I am a doctor. All right, where have you hidden the kit? Is everybody crazy? What are you talking about? As if you didn't know. Come on, where is he? Where's who? Cut the stall and where's the kid you're holding for ransom? What on earth are you gibbering about? I'm Dr. Allison and this is my assistant, Miss Miller. And there's only one child in this house and he's my son and he's upstairs sick. How do you like that, Sarge? Now he's telling us the kid's his son. But, but he is. You're both making a terrible mistake. Oh, yeah? It ain't us who make some mistakes. You didn't figure on a neighbor calling us and reporting a rope ladder hanging out of your back window, did you? Oh, no. Oh, yes. But your biggest mistake was forcing that poor kid to call us up and pretend the whole thing was a gag. Who, 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 who called you? Uh, huh? You didn't figure we could trace that call. Uh, doctor, doctor, what's all them police cars? Oh, uh, huh? uh, here's another of the gangs, Sarge. Don't you dare speak. <laughs> speak to me like that. What's going on in here? They think we've kidnapped somebody. Come on, cut the stall and where's the kid? You mean Jeep? I mean the kid who threw that kidnap note out of the window. The kidnap... Uh, oh, my goodness. Oh, he didn't throw that out. I did. Huh? I sure Jeep wasn't supposed to get out of bed, so I threw the note out for him. It was a game he and Tommy Barton were playing. Oh, no. But you mean nobody was kidnapped? Of course not. That's what I tried to tell you, Sarge. You shut up. <laughs> What's going on here? Well, Tommy, what do you want? I guess you're pretty busy right now. But would you give Jeep a message for me? Ask him what happened to the note he was supposed to throw out the window. So long! Hey, what was all that about? And where's the kid who started all this? He's upstairs in bed. What's wrong with him? Right now, it's just measles. Me? Hey, Sarge, we better get out of here. Yeah. Oh, doctor. Now what? Your face. It's all broken out in spots. <laughs> Pop, the minute you told me a policeman's been here, called him up, and I tried to explain, and I guess they just wouldn't believe me. Well, put yourself in their place. Would you believe it? No, I suppose not. And now, to top it all off, I got the measles. You can't blame me for that. No, I guess not. Anyway, why aren't you in bed? <laughs> what are you talking about? I can't go to bed. I have to go down to the police station and explain all this to the lieutenant, and somebody's got to tell the neighbors what's been going on. Pop, go to bed. You won't have to explain to anybody. Oh, great. What about my patients? Who's going to take care of them? When you're sick, you got to lie down. Give your body a chance to reciprocate. Now, you mean recuperate. <laughs> sure. The way I look at it, Pop, the whole thing's like a boxing match, see? And hey, oh, okay, son. Move over. <laughs> My Son Jeep was created and written by Walter Black and William Mendry and directed by Dan Sutter. Music selection by John Geller. Tonight's cast included Lynn Allen as Barbara Miller, Leona Powers as Mrs. Bixby with Nelson Armstead, Arnold Robertson, David Winters, and young Martin Houston as 10-year-old Jeep. Starring in the role of Doc is one of America's finest actors and most versatile comedians, Donald Cook. Now this is Fred Collins inviting you to be with us again next week, same time, same station, for the next delightful episode of My Son Jeep. My Son Jeep came to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.